Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's my pleasure today to introduce the program. But before I do, I need to clarify one of the President Al's remarks earlier. When he said anyone in the club is welcome to take the microphone if they know what the outcome of the trial and the, the numbers was, I think I'm pretty sure he meant anyone but Jody Keller. And <laughs> <laughs> those of you that were here in the club, the jury was present and know exactly where that comment came from. <laughs> anyway, it's my pleasure today to introduce the, uh, the Children's Home of York. I had the pleasure of having been on the board of the Children's Home and now on the advisory board for, I guess, pushing 20 years as president of the board. We have uh, three speakers today um, the Children's Home of York president and CEO, Vince Lasorda. His PhD. Uh, he'll be presenting the director of programs, Steve Shuck, who is an LCSW, a BCD, and Ed Watson, who is a Master of Social Work and an LSW in celebration of Children's Homes of York's 150th anniversary. Dr. Resorsa, Mr. Shuck, and Mr. Watson will highlight the Children's Homes past, present, and future, highlighting the impact of the Children's Home has had on generations of York County. Vince joined the Children's Home as interim president and CEO in July of 2014 and became the permanent president and CEO in January 2015. He has 19 years of experience working with organizations focused on improving the lives of children and families in need. Steve has been with the Children's Home for 15 years. He is currently the director of program services, overseeing permanency services, foster care and adoption, and early intervention. Edward has been serving the Children's Home and the Children and Youth in it for 25 years through his work at the Children's Home. Currently, he serves as Director of Program Services, overseeing the Girl Center Residential Treatment Facility, the Independent Living Services, and Bridges Partial Hospitalization Program and Prevention Services. And I'd like to formally apologize to Jim Keller because I'm not safe that I don't. <laughs> welcome, welcome, Miss Resources. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you, the Rotary Club of York County, for giving us, the Children's Home of York, an opportunity to share in the celebration of our 150th anniversary. I want to first acknowledge a very committed and dedicated group of individuals who have supported the Children's Home in many ways for many years, our board of directors. They are well represented here this afternoon, and I just want to ask them to please stand. Thank you for all that you do for the Children's Home. <laughs> Secondly, the Children's Home would not be the safe haven that it is for so many children and families if it not for our staff. I want to acknowledge the staff and publicly thank them for all, on behalf of our organization and our children. Your wonderful work is greatly appreciated. You will meet some other special folks throughout the presentation. Sam, we thank you for being here. The folks at this table, thank you for being here. Again, uh, York Rotary, thank you for allowing us to share with the to share with you the children's own story as we celebrate our 150th anniversary. As we have been preparing for our anniversary, we came across a 1989 memo from a former executive director to then board member Barry Stevenson. It resonated with me as being an appropriate start to today's presentation. It stated, quote, one of the first acts that I made as executive director of the Children's Home when I started in January of 1973 was to contract for the demolition of the old Children's Home on the corner of Pine and Philadelphia Streets. With the disappearance of this historical building, I honestly felt that the community thought that the agency had disappeared along with this building. End of quote. The ripple effects of the demolition have remained. Many folks no longer know what we do or how we do it or what we are or that we're even still in existence today. 
We are excited to be here today to give you a window into the mission of the Children's Home in action. My colleagues, Mr. Stephen Shook and Edward Watson, are going to share how we have evolved and changed over 150 years. The future of the Children's Home will be to continue to serve children, families, and communities through unique programs and services and will continue to be flexible in adjusting our services to the times. Change has been a constant at the Children's Home. If, if our predecessors did not make the brave decision to close and eventually demolish the orphanage, we would no longer exist and thousands of children and families would not have been cared for or supported. As we look in the future, we know that we will continue to serve our mission of empowering children to thrive, strengthening families, and enriching communities. During the remainder of this year, we will continue to share our story with others. We'll host program open houses and celebrate the commitment that this community has had to the children and families served by the Children's Home. I want to now invite Mr. Stephen Schultz to the podium as he will share with you more about the Children's Home past. Thank you.
to achieve both their educational needs and their mental health needs. We also offer early developmental services that provide much needed extra support for families receiving early intervention services from the county. Our staff help families develop coping skills, learn to problem solve, and connect with needed community services for their child. Finally, the Children's Home has an already impressive and still growing portfolio of prevention services that includes strengthening families, drug and alcohol prevention, and suicide prevention, all focused on the goal of helping families and helping our community. The diversity of our programming exists so that we can be sure to adequately serve the very needs of our community. We expect our evolution to continue as we strive to keep pace with our changing environment. We directors of the Children's Home have a list of goals and reminders that we have posted at the top of all of our meeting agendas. One of these are the words, so what? And that question acts as a constant reminder that what we and our staff do every day needs to mean something. Because we work for this community, because we work for the neighborhoods in our community, because we work for the families in the neighborhoods, and we work for the children in those families. Our work is about the group of siblings who after a lengthy separation are adopted and reunited with each other in a loving home. It's about the former gang member who I found one Christmas Eve crying on the steps of our independent living program because at 16 years of age, he had just opened his very first Christmas present. And it's about the mother of a young man who was graduating from one of our treatment programs. Upon arriving to pick him up and take him home for the first time in nine months, she turned to the staff and said, thank you for getting us our son back. And it's about this next young man, a current resident of our transitional living program at Market Street, a young man who has worked exceptionally hard to get on his current path. And having had the opportunity to speak to him and with him on many occasions, let me tell you that the, the smart money is on him being quite successful in his journey. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce to you Mr. Sam.
the emotional risk involved with this situation goes something like this. You've got to become significantly, or you take the chance of becoming significantly attached to the baby. All the Jacob's family members did. While knowing that other resources can step forward and claim relationship to the child. And so you might come and claim family ship and say that that's, that's our relationship. Nonetheless, the family committed the baby to him, including naming him. Within a brief period of time, the family began the process to legally adopt the child, and on November 13, 2014, Katie became a permanent member of their family. So it doesn't stop there. The caseworkers and other staff from our agency, um, and from the public, public agency that was involved, uh, were well apprised of the baby's health, the baby's well-being, the baby's developmental progress, However, the hospital staff were involved in caring for the baby during those two days of February, three days of February, 18th, 19th, and 20th. They weren't so lucky. For them, there was a discharge and then the unknown. In February of 2015, one year after Katie was placed with the Jacobs family, they took Katie back to the hospital, back to the hospital nursery for a visit. And the nurse who cared for him and who maybe possibly bonded with him during those three days in the nursery was present. She told the Jacobs family that for her to know that Katie was loved and safe was the best Valentine's Day gift was ever. While the nurse was talking to Katie and looking at Katie, he held her hand, he looked at her as if with recognition. And with that gesture, we recognize that this young boy feels and demonstrates the committed love of his family. And that they're all doing the hard work of staying in love. That's all, folks. <laughs> we thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to tell the story of the Children's Home Board, of the legacy of the agency, of our opportunity to follow through with the, the vision and, and mission of the founding members of, of the organization and for the community to allow us to do this from their 